In the news tonight, Jack Deal blames J.S. McDonald for rejection of government's 10% salary increase. And that Coretta McDonald, taking instructions from Congress, please, went and sabotaged this. Sabotaged this, worked up people, got, uh, uh, they, they got in touch, she and her cronies, with a not large number of people, or not large number of other teachers to write in, put it in the WhatsApp group that they rejected this. An electoral system is weak and needs a revamp, says the AFC. Biometrics is one such method that is recommended to cure that kind of impersonation. Vice President Barry Jack is blaming GTU General Secretary Coretta McDonald for the rejection of the 10% salary increase for our teachers from his government. At his weekly press conference on Thursday, Jack Deer said McDonald was taking instructions from Congress Place to derail the process, but McDonald said that is far from the truth. And that Coretta McDonald, taking instructions from Congress Place, went and sabotaged this. Sabotaged this, worked up people, got, uh, uh, they, they got in touch, she and her cronies, with a not large number of people, or not large number of other teachers to write in, put it in the WhatsApp group that they rejected this. This, didn't, this doesn't constitute a formal decision by the membership. The formal decision was made by the General Council of the Union. But Coretta McDonald, and why is this so? We've already established that Coretta McDonald is illegally in Parliament. She should not be the General Secretary of the Union because the Union's rules, their own rules said that you cannot be the General Secretary of the Union and be a member of Parliament. She has ignored her own Union's rule. That's one. Two, the General Council of the Union made a decision and she comes along taking the take instructions from Congress Place. She's a politician from Map News Camp. They don't want the issue resolved with teachers. So she goes to, to she sabotages the general council and then she gets the headline as though she is speaking on behalf of the union, but misleading the newspapers. The government is proposing 10, 8 and 9% salary increases in its three-year, multi-year proposal. The union said that the government can do better. According to Jack Dio, his government spends nearly $40 billion annually on wages and salaries for teachers. This here works out to over, it's about $4 billion, the 10%, and over the three years, when you look at it cumulatively, that will be about maybe just over 12% because you, you have to look at it cumulatively. And it would, um, it would be about $12 billion. The offer for the three-year package is to increase wages and salaries alone for the teachers for about $12 billion in the next two, two years. That is how much more teachers will get, or 60 million, 60 something million US dollars more they will get over the next three years, leaving out the other adjustments that we are making. Where you go on the scale, a number of people have been increased, put, put higher on the scale. We have now paid higher allowances for hinterland teachers. Um, we are paying more for qualified teachers and you know we already have 4,000 teachers now studying under the GOAL program so once they get a degree they will get a big allowance um, if you get a, a bachelor or a master or a doctorate you get bigger allowances in these areas. On Wednesday the Guyana Teachers Union officially rejected a 10% salary increase as the final offer by the government for 2024. This was following a meeting with the Ministry of Education and the Union at the Ministry's headquarters on Breakdown.
drink and taste, you will never decline. Extra lemon and lime, it's the two combined. It's one of a kind. Extra lemon and lime, extra lemon and lime. Taste the citrus in every sip. Guyana, get ready for the ultimate celebration of local talent and flavor. Exxon Mobil's Uncapped Marketplace and Food Festival is coming to the Guyana National Stadium on Saturday, August 31st and Sunday, September 1st. From authentic seasonings and sauces to mouth-watering dishes, there's something for everyone. Bring the whole family for a day of fun. Admission is free. We've got exciting games for the kids while you shop and explore. Don't miss Exxon Mobil's Uncapped Marketplace and Food Festival on August 31st and September 1st at the Ghana National Stadium. See, See you, you there! From the Army, I go to the police force, spend five years service. Then take a break and join Sheriff Security. And so far the experience has been good and I'm enjoying it. I like my work, very dedicated and determined. Very nice company, I have a lot of benefits. So I think Sheriff Security is one of the best so far for me, for my experience. Region 4, the Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union will be hosting its annual general meeting for the period 2021 to 2022 on Sunday, the 25th of August, 2024, for members of Region Number 4. The meeting will be convened at the Critchlow Labor College, Wolford Avenue, at 10 hours. Members are encouraged to, to pre-register at bit.ly forward slash GPS CCU AGM 2024 for further instructions on how to take part in the meeting and to vote for a new committee of management. The meeting will take place both online and in person at various locations across the country. Full participation of members is encouraged. Let us move your credit union forward. The Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union. People helping people. The responsibility rests with the Ghana Elections Commission to conduct free, fair and credible elections, says the Alliance for Change. At its weekly press conference, executive member of the party, Beverly Alert, said that there is growing concern that the next general and regional elections will once again dissolve into unrest unless improved systems are implemented at GCOM. Assurances by the Ghana Elections Commission that there are quote-unquote safeguards to prevent multiple voting, voter impersonation, and other forms of quote-unquote skullduggery, the term they used, appear empty in light of what transpired in 2020. There are facts that the Commission seem not to be addressing. Fact one, votes were cast in the name of deceased persons. Fact two, Immigration records revealed that votes were cast in the name of persons who were out of the jurisdiction on polling day. Fact three, the recount showed that pertinent documents were not placed in ballot boxes as required at the end of polls. These alone should have informed Jacob that the electoral system is weak and needs a revamp. Instead, the Commission continues to issue press releases on a regular basis. When was the last time the Commission held a community public education meeting or a session to educate first-time voters? When was the last press conference? GCOM will not be allowed to hide behind press releases and use, use the law as a cop-out to avoid addressing the concerns of the electorate. The party feels that nothing is stopping GCOM from the collection of biometrics. They've noted the weaknesses in the system from 2020. They should be making recommendations. Here is what needs to get done. There, at present, there is nothing stopping the collection of biometrics. Yes, there may be law 
on the use of biometrics on polling day. But that can be corrected by amendment to legislation. Biometrics is one such method that is recommended to cure that kind of impersonation. When you do not want to have impersonations, then you would want the biometrics legislation in place. But they don't want it. So it is bespeaking of what the PBP government and its attorney general is up to at this point in time. In political circles, there are calls for a clean voters list. General and regional elections are due in 2025. Washi. Hi, people. Washing made so easy since I found Washi. Washi me use, wash me clothes and I can say. Washi soap powder, wash clothes so nice. Washi soap powder, leave your clothes color bright. Washi soap powder, leave me clothes smelling nice, of course. So give thanks to Washi soap powder. For doing my laundry in right Keep my clothes color bright Have my clothes smelling nice for sure I could not ask for more Comes in lemon and original It is a washing machine in a pack Wash your soap powder, wash clothes so nice Wash your soap powder, leave your clothes color bright Wash your soap powder, have my clothes smelling nice, of course Distributors located in the Starbrook market it's here. Igloo ice cream fruit bars. Four mouth-watering flavors. Mango, pineapple, strawberry, and soursop. A beautiful combination of real fruit and igloo ice cream. Go old school with fluty popsicle. Classic flavors and refreshing goodness. Available at igloo outlets and all your favorite shops. The Guyana Water Inc. is working around the clock to remedy the discolored water coming through your taps. The utility company said this was caused by sediment intake at Shelter Belt and are working to ensure that the water quality returns to normal. At a press conference today, CEO of GWI Shake Batch explained what has caused the problem. Now, we, about one month ago, we recognized that there was a problem in our canals. We have two large canals in Shelter Belt, which serves as storage for water coming through the Lama Canal from the Conservancy, East Damarara Water Conservancy, into the Lama Canal, coming all those miles and feeding into the Shelter Belt compound where we have those two large canals. We observed, firstly, that something was wrong with the quality of the water coming in. And then we did further checks and we recognized that the sedimentation load coming into the plant was extremely high. As a matter of fact, we never experienced this, such a high sedimentation load in all the years. And many of the managers who are here for over 30 years have attested to this fact. So we acted immediately. I want to tell you that GWI did not hesitate one moment in trying to correct the problem. What we did, we immediately sent a team headed by Mr. Baran, who is the operations director, down into the conservancy. And he went all the way there. And he came back and he reported that there were problems with the water coming through from at that time from the Conservancy and because of the dredging of that canal in the Conservancy area during the drought, the long drought, the longest of years, a lot of sludge built up in the canal and with the heavy rainfall it moved down into our systems here, our reservoirs. Bash said he was concerned about the situation and the effects it was having on our souls. He said GWI has taken immediate steps to strengthen its system. Every day we've been out there in the various wards. Mr. Niles, the manager, has sent out people in all his teams to flush the water out of the system as much as possible. And this is ongoing. Already we're seeing some re relief. And we have taken samples of the water 
on a regular basis. And we have seen um, through the flushing, through the cleaning of the canals and so on, that the water quality and the water color in particular has, is improving. It will take a couple more days to bring it to the acceptable um, nor normalcy of the water supply. He demonstrated that improvements have been made in different wards of the city. You know, one, for example, this one comes from Queenstown, this one is coming from Lodge, and so on, from four different wards. It's improving, and we recognize it. But a lot of the build-up in the network, the transmission and distribution network in the city, the water remains. So constant flushing to get rid of that is in progress. According to the CEO, the situation was avoidable. For these and other stories, do visit us at our website www.rdproductiongy.com.